If you love what we do, then please consider supporting Cryptfail on Patreon. Your support helps us grow and to create more content more often. And now, on with the show. Chiaki will get up a little later, and when she walks into the main room, she will see Rin staring intently at a cup of tea, and hesitate because she is pretty sure Rin is mad at her, and so she doesn't really want to go sit down, but she doesn't know whether to go sit down or not, so she's just kind of standing there. So Rin... Sensing Chiaki's presence at the doorway, looks up and looks over at her. And she's looking at Chiaki and her uh, her face almost betrays a hint of um, surprise and she smiles and sort of turns away. Um, Her face sort of blushing a little bit and uh, from around to her side where um, probably Shiaki couldn't see, she uh, drags over a um, a teacup and saucer and starts preparing another cup of tea. Seeing that, Shiaki will walk over and sit down and just sort of very meekly stare down at the table and not say anything to anyone. Pouring tea, she passes it over to uh, Shaki. Who will take it? And Shaki's just going to continue not saying anything and looking at the table unless anybody says anything to her. And with her right hand, she brings it up to the middle of her chest and she does a a circle. Sorry. Uh, You do not have anything to apologize for, Saito-san. You really have no reason to apologize you are better at knowing what needs to be done the path of a samurai is sometimes never easy oh but i cannot help but be frustrated considering that it was not meant to be my path. We may be born to follow the path of the samurai and perhaps like you, I have dreams of my own I cannot follow them. Perhaps you were born to follow this path. Uh, And Rin's eyebrow raises. 
And Rin doesn't pry, and she starts. F- she focuses back on her tea again, um, in deep thought. He says, "Ah, uh, good morning, you two. Uh, are we f- friends again?" I believe so. And Rin. Nods. And a brother comes in and he is holding a blanket that's about three ish feet long, wrapped up. I have the swords for you. Carefully slides away from the table and stands up and shuffles over to the blanket and Opens up the blanket. Is it the two swords? It is the two swords. They look okay. Um, he wasn't an extremely high-ranking samurai, so they're, they're not the, the most elegant of blades, but they are definitely samurai ones, and they do look to be the ones um, that you would require. Uh, they, they, there is either... Uh, not not as crude as a maker's mark sort of thing, but the sword creator sort of signs them in their own way. Uh, so it's, it's the sword that... They are the swords you expected to find, and it does look to be from the correct clan and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's definitely not like some beat-up Ronin just sort of sword. And it's like, ha-ha, look, we got him. You know what I mean? There's There's ways to tell, so... All right, well, Rin will reach uh, beneath her kimono and um, pull out the pouch of um, coin and hand it to him. And he bows very low. Thank you, Samurai San. This will help us greatly. Uh, Chiaki is going to stand up from the table as well and sort of, I don't know, not sullenly. <laughs> walk over, not looking very eager to do so, but she's going to hold out some folded paper and ask him could you please give this to your sister? Oh yes, of course, absolutely. And he takes it, bowing low. Thank you. She was a little concerned as it contains a letter folded around one koku. The letter apologizing and giving her the message from the dead samurai, whether or not she believes it to be real is up to her. Uh. And he bows again and he leaves, leaving you with the two swords. Was that your Koku? Yes. From you? I had nine Koku. I had ten before. Kitsune stole one, had nine, and now I've got eight because I gave one. You're going to be broke by the time we get to the capital and keep handing those out. I didn't hand one to Kitsune. She took it. Uh, I mean, okay, so every adventure we've done so far, other than the Yeah, but there was the one, one where I got five. So with that, I just need the ninja lady to show up again and give me five <laughs> more. Every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while she'll just it's fine she'll be my financer every once in a while she'll know that I'm getting low on funds and she'll show up in the night and freeze time and give me money it's all good okay. <laughs> so anyway Rin will um, wrap the uh, swords up in the blanket again 
and go and sit down at the table with the swords next to her. And Chiaki will sit down as well. I wonder how he convinced her. She doesn't know. And then she signs, does it matter? I am sure it matters to her. And Rin nods and takes another sip of her tea. And she looks back up and she signs, um, we should go soon. All right. Uh, we head off back to the town. Uh, we... We can't leave yet. I need to... Uh, I need to go... Check on... Um... Shiaki's gonna stand up and run out of the inn. Rin is looking really confused. Chiaki is running back to the small house that Etsuko and her brother lived in. And she's... She knows something is wrong, and she's not quite... Well, she really has no idea what is wrong, just that something is. And the reason she ran to this house was because she'd just been thinking about Etsuko and feeling very guilty. So her first worry was that something was wrong there. So she's frantic enough that she's not knocking. She just opens the door. And it's quiet. And it feels empty. In that strange way that a house does, like when you come back and everyone else is out, you can almost feel that there's no one there, that there's no presence. But something feels amiss that she's not quite sure what it is. But looking around as she's standing there and she's looking around that the main room, there's just something about it that is tugging on her memory. Like there's something that is not here that was or there is something that is here now that wasn't. But she's not quite sure what it is. What What's going on? Something is wrong and I there was something here and it's gone or there's something that wasn't here but I I don't know Uh, what do you mean there was something here but now it's gone could it be the swords no uh, something may be gone or something may be here that wasn't something is wrong well now Daisuke is just looking really confused and Chiaki is sort of frantically looking around the room trying to figure out what it is she's not getting so she's going to turn and look at Daisuke almost desperately and say I I think there's something here that wasn't here yesterday do you see Anything that wasn't here. Um, and Daisuke sort of blinks and looks around the, the room. So Daisuke's looking around the room and he's like, um, keeps looking over at um, Chiaki and who he's a little bit concerned about and he walks over to one of the, uh, the walls, there's a painting, and he's looking closely at it as if to try and find a hidden message in this painting. And he, and he steps back and his heel catches on the corner of the rug beneath his feet and he sort of almost trips over it and he stumbles backwards a bit and he looks down and part of the the rug on the floor is sticking up and he bends over and and sort of lifts the the rug up steps back off the rug flicks the corner 
And there is a stain that's about two and a half feet wide. And at one end it is smeared towards the front door. Was this rug here yesterday? And she's just looking at the stain in horror. And that looks like blood. Something terrible happened. Alright, Daisuke is following the blood outside. Well, the smear it- leads... It doesn't go outside. The blood stops... It's The smear stops before the front door, but it's definitely in line with the front door. Rushed outside, but is now standing and just sort of looking around. Uh, she, after pausing for a moment and sort of looking around like she was trying to, I don't know, get her bearings, has suddenly rushed off with a great degree of sureness in one direction, as though she knows where she's going. You you come into the uh, a, a, like a bramble patch and on the other side there's a small clearing and it's only about 15 feet and it's grass but in the middle is upturned uh, soil. And Chiaki, who's been running, just sort of flings herself down in front of the soil and starts digging at it with her hands. Sort of scrabbling at it with her hands, yeah. She's not making great headway, but she's very, uh, well, desperate to dig at it. (sighs) Daisuke drops his bow and helps Chiaki dig away at the dirt. I don't think you're going to like what we find here. She doesn't answer and keeps digging. And after they have dug down about three inches in the soil, which has only, I mean, it's fresh, freshly upturned. So it's not packed. It's not really that hard to dig through. About three inches down, they uncover the sister and as soon as she has confirmation of what had happened Chiaki will stop digging and just kneel there staring we gave the brother the money right he didn't she didn't want to give us the swords and he couldn't convince her so did she uh, kill herself then no I don't think so. You think the brother? I... I... Chucky will sort of very slowly start scraping more dirt off until she's uncovered the wound. And after looking at it for a moment, she didn't. She didn't kill herself. He's gone. Chiaki, who has been staring into the shallow grave, will turn and look up at Daisuke, and her face is streaked with tears. There's also some dirt smudged on it, where she tried to wipe them away after digging with her hands. And her eyes look strange. You're not quite sure what it is. Maybe something about the pupil is different, but they don't look normal. Tell me why I shouldn't hunt him down and kill him. Wow. (laughs) Uh, Daisuke is is shocked. He takes a little bit surprised. And she's almost glaring at him. I could find him. It would be easy. It will not bring her back. Is it worth chasing after him over his deception? 
not over his deception. I think in the interest of the law, at least we should um, take this man to uh, the local magistrate. I can find him. It would be easy. We will go find him and hand him into the local magistrate. And then they shall decide his fate. Perhaps. If if he's gone to the next town where I think he's gone, I, you may have to uh, control yourself, Chiaki-san. Control? Fine. We will do what you think is best. Okay, so would you like to lead the way, Byaku-san? And as soon as she said that, she closed her eyes. And when she opens them, they look normal. I... I do not know if I need to lead the way. I believe he's gone to... The town past the shrine. The innkeeper mentioned that that is where people go to gamble. Should we not return and tell Saito-san where we are going? I suspect in some way she perhaps already knows. How would she know? I do not know, but she sent me to follow you and she did not come with I think to save conflict she's perhaps letting you decide the outcome of this situation I do not know if that would be wise Then shall we go? And Daisuke nods. So around midday, you find just past the shrine. And the shrine is not a big shrine, and it's not a um, populated shrine. And about 50 feet from the shrine... You find the brother, and he's on the ground, and he's slumped over. Mm. And Chiaki is cautiously approaching him. He does not move. She's going to bend down to check if he is alive. Just hold back a little ways, and... Make sh- and just draw his bow. He's dead. But then she sort of stands up and whirls around very quickly and looks at Daisuke and says, Behind you, someone. And she's looking. Okay. And there's people behind Daisuke that she can see. And Daisuke spins around. And there is four scruffy-looking ronin. They are unshaven, their clothes are dirty, they are armed with nasty-looking katanas, but no elegance to them. One leaps forward and does a wild hack at Daisuke, cutting the air with the blade. He's able to use his bow to deflect it to the side. He's um, deflected the katana with with his bow and um, spun around. And as he's done so, pulls an arrow to knock, but the, the guy's still too close. And Daisuke um, reactively uh, crouches down and thrusts the arrow up. Ronan steps back 
dropping dropping his sword and clasping at his leg as he looks up his face starts to go pale he collapses to the ground unconscious uh Chiaki has drawn her katana and is looking very hesitant, especially for somebody who was making all kinds of threats on the brother earlier. And she will sort of cautiously, because the sword fighting she learned was mostly how to not die, as I recall. (laughs) That's mostly what Daisuke taught her. She's going to cautiously move forwards and see if she can get up to one of them without immediately being killed. So for the first bit, she's sort of, she, she'd moved up to next to Daisuke, but she's backing off quite a bit as she is constantly stepping back as the Ronin moves forwards and has not yet found an opening. At one point, she nearly trips backwards and is fairly certain she's about to die stabbed into the ground, but as she nearly trips, she sort of flails out with the sword, which does happen to strike his throat. As he falls to the ground, however, he also manages to graze her arm, so she has a very slight wound there, but he is down and bleeding out. One pulls a small blade As Chiaki cuts his companion's neck, he throws the dagger. It probably would have hit her solidly if she'd have been standing still, but because she was moving with him, she feels a graze on the side of her ribs as it passes. And the last one, slicing at Daisuke, trying to open him up and he does four wild cuts that only one manages to hit in the end and he cuts Daisuke's leg. So considering he's running towards her, she she doesn't feel as confident that she can just keep up her backing up strategy so she is going to rush forwards at him as well and attempt to strike first. I think this makes it fire maybe because it's more aggressive she's charging right at him and for a moment she thinks she'll actually be able to strike him before he even has time to react properly but at the last second he does bring the katana down and parries her strike however his sword shatters with the impact it clearly was old and not very well maintained And that causes him to stop, surprised and a little unsure of what to do now. And she will take that moment to stab him through the chest. So as the other guy uh, lunges forward and cuts him in the leg, um, Daisuke yelps out in pain, starts backing away. As the Ronin heads towards him, he throws the bow at the Ronin who... Almost goes to grab it and then realizes that that wasn't, it's not probably the recommended thing to do. So he swipes it out of the way with his, with his sword. Daisuke's backed up over towards the guy that was lying on the, on the ground, slips over him as the run and swipes the air uh, where Daisuke was. And Daisuke looks to his right and finds the katana of the the guy that's laying the the running that's laying on the ground and he grabs the katana and as the ronin takes another swing swings down quite heavily um daisuke brings the katana out just in time to uh, deflect and um defensively uh, move the katana to the side he knocks the guy over using his elbow and pushes the katana through the side of the runnin'. And Chiaki's just sort of staring down at the guy that she stabbed, who is now dead. What do we do now? And Daisuke's sort of taken off his... the top part of his... um, 
clothing the shirt and he's wrapping his leg up as it's bleeding quite badly. Uh, are you okay, Byaku-san? I... I am bleeding. Ah, these Ronan must have been in hiding. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't see them. Or hear them. I could smell them. The shame you didn't smell them sooner. <laughs> and he sort of chuckles a little bit. And she puts a hand to her ribs and pulls it away and sees that it's covered in blood. And then just kind of stares back at Daisuke. I guess we should go back. And Daisuke picks up his quiver and, and bow and drops the katana on the ground or throws it. I wonder if those were the bandits that attacked uh, the samurai. Chiaki has not actually started walking along with Daisuke yet. And if he turns around, he will see that she is sort of staring off to the side at something, although he doesn't see anything. I mean, Byaku-san? I... Yes. And she turns away and starts to follow. Well, eventually, when we return to the village, Chiaki is just going to walk straight back into the inn, as she doesn't mm -hmm. really know where else she would go, and look for Rin. Who's sitting in at the same place she was when you left her. She's been sitting there for like 12 hours or something, just like... Chiaki, his hands are covered in mud, and she still has some mud on her face. She's got dried blood on her arm and her side, which may still be slightly bleeding. I don't know. Walking might reopen stuff. I have no idea. And just looking fairly... I don't know. She doesn't look frantic anymore. She doesn't have much of an expression to her. And... Rin, seeing Chiaki, the, the state that she's in, uh, gets up quickly from her uh, from the table, almost uh, dropping the tea, and the tea sort of spills out over the side of the cup and shuffles up to Chiaki really quickly and signs, are you okay? And puts her uh, arm around her and... I guess she's helping her into uh, the room. I am... Um, fine, I, I think. As you both are heading towards the room, you hear Daisuke coming in and going, Yep, yep, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, uh, <laughs> I'll just look after myself then in cape Daisuke may require more assistance as his leg is injured and the in cape comes out looking at you with a bit of a quizzical look upon his face and he's like I know some medicine what is it that you need bandits we were attacked by bandits um but uh, my friend byaka san has a cut on on her side um and her hand and i have a uh, a deep cut on my leg he goes over and he pours some hot water into uh like a a large bowl then goes out of sight and comes back with some what looks like they'll work as bandages. All right, cool. And he does an okay job. Like, not spectacular, but it's definitely he has some idea what he's doing, and you think that he, the, the wounds are cleaned reasonably well and then strapped. Atsuko is dead. Can someone bury her? Yes, I will see to that. So is her brother. He's by the shrine, but... 
he killed her, so I don't know if you want to bury him. He was always trouble, but I didn't think he would stoop so low. He was killed by bandits. Probably a just fate. Well, in a way, Rin feels bad for not going now. She didn't actually expect the bandits. Well, neither did we. So, but she's she's sort of blaming herself, so that's why she's pretty quiet. Okay, so when we head back to the, the, the other town, we will return the swords to the um, lady. And she bows very low. She sees you in that same room that she did the first time. And you feel the bow is one of gratitude, although you realize her motivations. And she places the swords on a rack at the back of the room. And she thanks you for it. Was the small child there? Mm-hmm. He was playing in the corner. Chiaki is not saying anything in this situation at all. She just kind of stares at the swords. Well, Rin doesn't say anything much that other than the um, she signs that the blood these swords come with are not worth the prestige. Chiaki doesn't have to come into the um, meeting with the Lord. It's just a formality. Then where would I go? Perhaps you can organize some rooms for us? Before we head out in the morning. All right. And she will go do that. The Legend of the Five Rings role-playing game is available from Edge Studios, starring Raven and Sane as Rin, Emily as Chiaki, and Ghost as the storyteller. Sounds and music were provided by Sirenscape and Nash Music Library. This has been a Critvale production. Thank you very much for listening.